Welcome back, people of the internet. Whoops, but here. Here we have the next project. So my dudes, my dudes, this is what we call a weldy. Now why we call it a weldy is because they, both shafts, are spun together and they spin together because the inside is welded. Yeah, it's 16. Don't do what I do. It's a 16 or a 17. So, as you can see, we have a very send it kind of style. Unfortunately though, um, generally you shouldn't, at least from my knowledge, but from what I've seen in these diffs, in these cars, you don't weld both sides because then you can't get these stub shafts out here if they break on the inside here. So, this is the open diff that is now out of the car. And I'm going to show you basically how the other dude welded the, um, the other diff. You can see that we've got our um, pivot bearing or whatever it is for the two axle spider gears. And you can see the end of the stub shaft there. And you can't really see it, but there's another one there. Um, so basically how the dude who welded the other diff did it, he just sent it, I think. And he literally welded everything because now you can't get the stub shafts out, um, which I'm a little concerned about. Um, but essentially, how you'd want to weld the diff, you do not need plates. You don't. Do not need all this other shit. Um, literally, a good solid weld in each corner. About what, 15 mil or however long the spider gear is, pretty much. A good solid weld in each corner. And then you do the same for the other side there. All right. And then you literally do the same on both sides. So basically, you've um, you've now balanced the diff. Instead of doing four welds on one side, now there's going to be a little bit more of a weight disparity between each side of the diff. So when it's spinning quite aggressively, um, you're going to have a small vibration to try and mitigate that. Um, you want to copy it on the other side and try and basically, um, you're basically balancing the diff by doing it on both sides. A 10 mil fillet weld will hold a ton of um, force and that's a, lot of, that's a lot of weight so to speak. So I think that's plenty in terms of when you're welding your diff um, and you can still get the stub shafts in and out and you won't have problems um, reinstalling and changing stuff if stuff breaks. So basically... In these cars, this is the bolt for the front bushing, the front carrier bushing. Obviously, these are the two back ones, but on medium cases, there are 30 spots that um, have bushings for the diff from factory. Here, M12, more often than not, this M12 bolt snaps when this front carrier bush goes. So, it's recommended to upgrade both, obviously, the bushing and the thing. So, I've already ordered that from Condor. So we're going to be tapping it out to M14 by 1.25 um, and basically putting new bushes in this thing, etc, etc and um, cleaning it up, giving it a, a quiet clean, not really quiet, just basically take it apart, put some fluid in it, send it. I was having trouble doing the cast iron um, piercing out for the medium case dip. Um, and so, I didn't realise how hard cast iron kind of was, I suppose. So, then I changed my approach. The third is basically 11mm wide, so I tried going to a 10, 10 and a half mil drill bit first. Oh, sorry, 11. And that got basically the first, um, the first bit started. Then I moved up, uh, too much to 12 mil, and it just grabbed. It bit like a... Is my language, but 
to... Basically, I have to just keep going up half a mil size per drill bit. And once I was able to do that, and I got, and I threaded um, the gift case most of the way, I actually had to carve out um, a little bit extra flesh on the side because the actual tap itself was like on an angle. It was really weird. So yeah, I just uh, cleaned up this little bit so I could continue the tap through. Um, if you only had a, uh, a little bit of bolt in the threads, about maybe halfway, it was a little bit wiggly because of the start of the 13. Um, that was a little bit bigger than 12.5, it was 13 mil. Um, the th that little recess where the stock bolt goes into, um, before it starts biting on the threads. So that was really annoying. Um, but once the bolt pretty m was all the way through the threads, it was a nice tight snug fit. Um, and we basically increased our thread area by something like 20% or something compared to the stock um, setup. So uh, that's pretty good considering also we also upgraded the thread size itself to M14. So I'm pretty confident that this will be fine for the future. Okay, so cleaned up the diff, got rid of this gasket. It was really um, crap to get off actually. Tightened the um, MT plug. The field plug is still loose because I've got to get a washer for it. Um, didn't come with one, so eh. Um, now I'm about to put um, RTV on this to put the plate on. Um, essentially, um, it's very imbalanced. So I just put a little strap on it on a couple of piece of wood. And this is like down above, so it's easier to, you know, see how straight I am. So yeah, let's just put it on. I command Z. No leak in the 36 diff. First landing the oh, sorry, I kind of zoomed you in there permanently. There, that was an accident. Um, RTV it on all talk down with ugly little doggy. Um, sensors in, it does go in uh, a certain way, so do be mindful of that. Have a little washer um, for the bottom one, don't have for the top one, so just gonna have to get one of those. And um, I poured what I had of 7590 in there, semi-synthetic. And it's, um, yeah, still need a little more, so that's all right. Grab some full synthetic from the shop and a little bit sharp from someone. Uh, I'm guessing f um, flathead hammering it off. So I've drawn up a few little examples to try and explain why um, you want axle spaces or, um, yeah, pretty much axle spaces or slightly um you could say longer axles but in most cases you don't get longer axles when you lower your car you put spaces where you correct your alignment with the correct arms etc etc and i'll quickly try and explain a little bit about the setup <coughs> excuse me i've been a bit sick i'm starting to recover which is why i'm doing what i'm doing because i can't just sit on my ass it's really annoying I need to do something, <laughs> otherwise I get super bored. All right, so from factory, most of, most of your suspension setups, um, the manufacturer will have set up your suspension to basically be as um, perpendicular, parallel, and um, not linear, but um, all pretty much um, perpendicular, um, parallel, as possible so that there's no binding in suspension setup now let's say you have a truck and you raise the vehicle let's say you put a three inch lift kit on it bigger springs bigger shocks etc basically what's going to happen because let's say you haven't changed any of your arms your arms are not going to change length unless you have adjustable arms but let's just say you don't have adjustable arms you've got normal stock arms so don't worry about that let's say you've just lifted your car um, and you haven't got an alignment yet. What tends to happen um, is you're actually going to gain positive camber, which is um, 
probably not ideal in any situation. Negative cameras are always a little bit more favoured, especially on the front end when you're steering, but we won't go into that. Basically, what's going to happen when you lift the car, um, your tyre is going to basically, from straight, it's going to start going like this, because this arm or one of your whatever suspension arms you have they're the same length no matter what so basically when you raise your car it's having to pull the bottom of the tire up yeah but or in so to speak in to um match the lifting that you're lifting your car by because this arm length isn't changing it's basically pulling all of it's pulling up so this end is pulling up this end is pulling in to pull up with that now when you lower your car, the opposite happens. So basically, um, when you put smaller springs or whatever, whatever you do to lower your car, what's gonna happen is your subframe diff and everything wants to come down now, yeah? So what in turn happens is it pushes these arms into, it pushes these arms into the um, wheel hub because you don't have adjustable arms. I'm lucky on this car, because I do have adjustable um, arms on the rear, so I can sort of correct my alignment like that. But from factory, let's say you have factory arms, you're going to need adjustable arms to um, have a more adjustable and correctable um, camber alignment. Um, so essentially, when you do this as well, even when you have arms, your axles stretch, yeah? So from here, when it's um, straight and everything, it starts basically stretching because you're having to pull it down or pull it up. Basically, you're just stretch you're stretching the axles. So what ends up happening is you actually start weakening the strength of the axles because you're putting uh, different um, types of stress on them. Basically, to alleviate this and to um, what. To alleviate this problem, a common thing to do is put axle spaces for BMWs in particular. So basically what that does is it closes up and tightens the um, the joints, the CV joints on both ends of the axles. And so how that helps is, well now basically there's more axle in the CV joint to support all the torque, all the load, etc. And so it helps reliability and for you to stop breaking axles if you are using the car like I am going to be using it for um, more track and more drifting. Um, so yeah. Um, now I'm going to check on basically reliability dips, bushes, etc. Now I've already ordered a, con a Speed Condor um, M14 diff bush upgrade kit, blah, 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 etc. It comes with the bolt for here, it comes with the diff bushings for here and here, and the bushing here to support the M14 upgraded bolt. But let's say you are reusing the stock bushings on the diff case. Let me just grab a different screwdriver of some sort. <clears throat> Make sure they aren't torn or ripped or anything. You can tell that it's still it's still pretty sturdy, the diff bushing. There's a little bit of movement, but that's what you get with stock bushings. And they aren't torn or anything, they seem pretty good still. And for our stock power levels, these will be just fine. Um, I want to avoid going to poly or stock bushings yet since um, I haven't reinforced the chassis that's also another big problem with these cars they're great lightweight cars but there's a few major things that you need to do to them to make them reliable on the track for drifting um, but that will be later in the year etc etc I'll do that in another video um, but for now we're focusing on the rear part of the drivetrain basically making that reliable and um, making sure we don't break any axles or diff cases or you know whatever because the last thing I want to do is break an ear off or break an axle um, what else what's another one yeah break an ear off or break an axle or um, break our bolt here because um, it's yeah basically I would I'll, it's better to do all the upgrades at first otherwise you're having to spend twice the money having to buy a new axle if you do break an axle, if you didn't buy the spaces at first, having to buy as well a new bolt, new bushing, as well as t tapping it out, etc. So while I'm in here, while I'm swapping the diff out, I 
do advise to do all the upgrades um, straight up so that you're not having to spend twice the money in the future fixing and upgrading what you've already done to the car. So, funny thing, I just found out. I'll just pull it. Oh, you won't be able to see it. Dang. There. You can't see it, but there are tiny cracks in the bushing. Both of these bushings are starting to crack. It's in there. In the same place down the bottom there. Um, I've only just realised that. So, um, yeah, we'll be replacing these bushings with um, the aftermarket Condor speed kit that we get. Um, and I think that'll be fine for vibration and drivetrain shit. I hope, I hope it won't cause too many problems with the um, stock caps mushrooming out too much at the moment. Um, as I would like to learn a little bit before going too far into the car fabrication to upgrade it for our purposes, our needs. Um, yeah, um, now you'll need a sawzall or you need a press. So what I did is I grabbed a five mil drill bit and I drilled holes all the way around and I just massaged it. Um, then I got my sawzall in there or reciprocator, whatever you'd like to call it. Basically, um, get in there, cut the plastic around and get these grooves. Cut, basically put a notch into the outer um, bushing shell to basically loosen the tension. And I was then able to also cut more plastic and just push the inner center out. And now I should be able to just um, bash this piece out with a hammer and a chisel. So yeah, I'm just gonna replace, um, re um, repeat it for this side as well. Not gonna lie, this is my first time doing bushings like this. So I'm kind of new to it. Wish I have a press. Hopefully in the future I have a press, but for now this is how we're going to do it. Oh, before I get too far into it, I'll show you why I'm replacing the bushings. As you probably didn't see before because of the light. But it's cracking. You can see that. Uh, I saw people get these bushings out with... Uh, torches and stuff and I don't really like that way of burning rubber so I, oh. I tried it to be honest I knew I could do it with a drill bit but um yeah that was my way to do it still stunk though but not as badly I don't think as a normal uh -huh. uh, torch way so yeah, this is how the bushings have turned out had to get the middle center out first before I could get the outer piece out cut a you know hole, not a hole a line and then kind of chisel a little away at it um, you can see that I have done a little bit of scuffing to the outside. On this side, I just gave it a little bit of a hit with some 80 grit and it cleaned it up quite nicely. So I'm just going to do the same here. Normal lithium grease isn't good for polyurethane bushings, so use um, dishwashing detergent instead. Um, so, for our diff brace, it actually needs to sit flush, I believe, up against this surface here. And so, this surface protrudes out quite a bit. However, this little lip here is to stop the bushing basically um, falling out, sorry, falling through. Um, and the other side goes up against a brace anyway, the inner part goes up a in a face anyway, so I think we can take this lip off and shave it down just a touch to suit our needs, I think. So I was taking apart the um, brake setup essentially to just tighten up our handbrake a little bit and um, make it suitable for the next few events um, and stuff. So if we we have the ability to use our handbrake if we want to, obviously it's not uh, particularly the greatest option because it's um, still the stock handbrake. But E36 handbrakes are stronger than usual, 
Um, so this should be fine for the first few events. And if I like, Alrighty. you know, Dragon Drift, then I'll um, put a pop of Hydro in. We're getting serious now, boys. So this rotor was being really stubborn and didn't want to come off. Um, I basically had to heat it up quite a bit. Yes, I had the handbrake off. Um, and I didn't leave the handbrake on. Um, but I really had to put a ton of heat into this. Um, and then also put a bolt and nut behind as I'm about to show to get it off and pop it off. Yes, I know I shouldn't be putting WD-40 on brakes, but I was just using it to try and, you know, help break the seal a bit. And yes, I used brake cleaner and acetone. We've got quite a few, we've got quite a bit of pad left actually. So as you saw, it took quite a bit to get this rotor off. But basically what I'm doing is um, checking in the assembly is fully functional, fully working. Nothing looks like it's about to break or broken. Um, and on this side at least, I'm finished. I thought I had to take the axle nut off. I was wrong. Um, however, it did take quite a bit of heat to get into this and then I WD-40 this ring here after I found out that it wasn't attached to this in any sort of way um, and then I put a bolt and nut behind it um, a bolt here and a nut I'm sorry a nut here and a bolt coming this way to put pressure on the rotor um, banged it a few times came loose finally um, and so now I'm adjusting the handbrake on these um, unlike Toyotas and other Japanese cars you're able to adjust the handbrake with the rotor on on e36s that i know of i'm not sure about other bmws or whatever but um you have to take the rotor off to adjust the handbrake so basically um turn this little cog thing in ways with a flathead screwdriver um to basically um tighten your handbrake make this bigger the handbrake shoes um wider or turn it towards the um, hub bearing part, this part, turn it this way to make it smaller. Um, in my case, I needed to make it um, quite a bit bigger, actually, it hadn't been adjusted in a while. So, um, um, but from the looks of it, there's plenty of material on these pads left. Um, and so, yeah. So a while back, we took out our mud flap thingy here. As you can see, it's been ripped. <laughs> We're replacing it today, finally, after however long it's been. Just basically to protect this filter stuff, really. So I've adjusted everything, put everything back together. It's nice and tight now, as such will demonstrate. It's pretty tight, it's nice. It's pretty much like how they should come from the factory. And plus, it what makes, it what sells a car. Probably the feel of it in terms of the handbrake as well. So now, put the under, the, the under there. It's a bit hard to show you on the camera. But it's pretty filthy. So I'm just going to bring the car out a little bit. Put it on jack stands. And give it a, a good clean out and wash. Not in here, because it's kind of freshy concrete. And um, I prefer not to stain the shite out of it so i'd go to the bad concrete that's pretty cooked and got lots of stains on it already so yeah just gonna clean it up and prepare it for the diff swap and stuff let's go
Classic Australia. It's raining. But doing the oil filter, doing air filter as well. Um, while it's up on the air, I've already degreased and cleaned a lot of the back ready for our diff change and um, getting an idea of how to go through that. But yeah, these engines, they love to be abused, but in order to be abused, you must maintain them. So if you abuse, give it love. It needs, it needs oil, it needs fresh oil, it needs a lot of fresh things, oh, quite a bit. Get in there, matey. Oh. I've got a feeling that I needed to check my power steering. Put my finger in it. it looks brown. We're going to take some of it out. It don't look good, boys. It don't look good. sludge I love it um yes this is very bad Ugh. bruh I just spit all over me dude it was damn she ain't a happy f that ain't red that's brown that's nasty that's nasty boy alright we have this came in today i'm very happy very happy with the quality they are local and close by and they make diff brackets diff braces essentially to stop the ears breaking off these and i'm actually quite happy with the finish just kind of would have um would have liked if they offered different color options but it doesn't matter it's all good like it they also give you um new hardware to support the everything whatever and um, I'm quite happy with it. So yeah, let's, let's install it. They even kept this to go on. That. That is attention to detail, friends. Alright, well, we did some... Okay, look, I know it's been a little while, you see the diff here, but unfortunately I didn't really record much of um, us removing everything from the car, as you're about to see. It's all out. Ready to go. It's pretty easy actually, and I don't think Gus has been featured on the channel no, before. No. He's uh he's here today helping us, and he's he's a mad bloke. I love supervising. him. Supervising. <laughs> he's supervising me. No, learning. learning, supervising, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Better go. Yeah. If you want to go in, or oh, is that all the way in already? Oh, it is. Cool. <laughs> Diff time. So basically, reinstallation diff reverse of how you take it out. Off with the sway bar, off with the axles, off with um, the rear part of the tail shaft. Um, and pretty much the axles will pop off and the diff will come out. Um, it's pretty easy. Uh, it is. It, it does help to use a jack um, or a transmission jack if you're on a hoist to get it in. It is a heavy little unit, it's 30 kilos or something. While I was screwing around with the diff a little more, I'm um, trying to get this bolt in. Gus took um, the rear end of the shaft, 
and started cleaning up the spines and to be honest with you i didn't i didn't see until i watched the video how clean they were so mad um shout out to him he did an awesome job Just tighten up a few things now. The um, fuel line, um, I dodged it up a little while ago. I need to fix it the next time I take the tank down. It's fine for the moment, it's cool. Um, but basically, fuel, um, the main fuel feed line is kind of pushed down a little bit. So I just jimmied up a little bracket, painted it black, and um, zip tied it all together and on to try and keep it together kind of finished everything we kind of can for today end of the day you can always tell by the crazy hair crazy dirty hands but regardless we have a lot of our rear end sorted out it's a bit hard to tell basically everything has gone back on in terms of like the, everything we can put back on heat shield exhaust um yeah it's just a matter of waiting for our axle spaces and putting it back on really oh and we also have to do our power steering but that will be um this it's brown as you saw and yes <laughs> so i'm not gonna lie having this little impact with an adapter and the e12 torx bit for the um axle bolts oh man it made so much of a difference rather than going there and wrenching i could just stick this in and undo two bolts at a time then turn the axle undo two bolts at a time and it, hell, it made that job way quicker. It was, yeah, I'd definitely, I don't know, try and borrow at least a gun like this. You know, I accidentally forgot to record me putting on the axle bases. I just didn't record. Um, but they're on. You can see them with the new hardware, Allen bolts. Um, we're now putting the sway bar back on and the rest of the rear end back on. Um, and just finishing it up, really. Um, make sure when you put the sway bar on, you don't tension it on, uh, a few threads on on everything, then lay it down on the ground and then tighten everything, because otherwise um, the tension on the sway bar um, won't be quite right. So that is basically the end of this episode, pretty much. Sway bar is tightened now that it's down, wheels are on, still need to tighten the wheels though, but um, basically in the next episode, we sh or next time I see you, we are going to be doing the power steering and a few other little things, mainly the power steering though, we'll be making um, those lines and tackling the shit mess under the butt. As you can see, spacer, oh, a spacer here is on, got our new bolts with a little bit of medium Loctite with our new cover and the diff the special thing which makes it easier to spin both wheels so yes oh yeah the exhaust has got to go back on i forgot about that i'll do that next episode yeah see you guys